On today's episode of Project R7, we're talking about the snorkel debate, specifically the snorkel that goes from atmosphere under your seat, pulls atmosphere in, goes through the lid, through your air filter, into your airbox, and then goes into your motor. There's been a lot of talk over time uh, about removing the snorkel, what it does, if you gain power, that kind of thing. So what we're gonna talk about today, we did a bunch of testing with the OEM snorkel, the OEM lid, OEM air filter, changing it out to some race airbox lids and to the race air filter. Uh, we did this on the HO model in Australia, which is the same as the international model. So all these results are a bit more horsepower than some of our previous testing, but uh, the way we did the testing was we ran stock, made a change, got the result from that, then changed everything back to stock to make sure that our uh, results don't change too much and then continue doing the modifications. So what we have here, we have the stock snorkel in the stock airbox lid, which you can see here. And then we have the OEM air filter. So we'll come back to that. The big debate is what happens if you remove this snorkel or is it best to remove it, leave the stock lid on? What we've done in our testing was we remove that snorkel. You get this piece, which we've looked at before leaving you with the stock airbox lid with that standard size hole. So what we did was we tested with both together, got horsepower, then removed the snorkel. What we actually found when we removed that snorkel and just had the standard airbox lid was we had a power change of, at the top end, at the very peak power, we actually lost 0.8 of a horsepower, so it's less than one horsepower, it's not really a huge amount. Uh, but we gained three horsepower at about the 5,500 RPM uh, rev range, which is kind of more or less where you're going to be doing most of your riding. And that was literally pull the snorkel, run the bike on the dyno, do the test and see what changes we have with the stock mapping. We didn't fuel it, we didn't do anything with it. It was literally just pull the, uh, pull the, the snorkel and see what happens. Then we swapped the standard air filter out for the DNA air filter, which we have previously test before. With the stock lid on the airbox, we had no change. It was ostensibly the same. There might've been 0.01 horsepower change throughout the rev range, absolutely zero change. So it looks like the lid in that regard is the limiting factor. With the DNA filter in, we then changed out from the standard lid to the DNA, the specific DNA air filter lid, which we've looked at in another video. What that does is it opens that opening up allows more in air to go in through the filter. And the results we had with that was we had a net loss of point or half a horsepower at peak RPM, but we've moved the, uh, the power around the rev range. And again, we've boosted that mid range power. So compared to stock at that five and a half thousand RPM, we've actually boosted the power by about four horsepower. So while you may potentially feel a little bit of difference at the top, it's not really worth it, doesn't really matter because as a street bike, you're gonna gain a little bit more in the mid-range. So why these results? Basically, the bike likes to breathe. So changing, removing the snorkel, changing the size of the uh, intake hole on the lids seems to net the most power. Unless you're changing the lid out, you may as well leave the stock air filter in. We found that when you compare the stock airbox lid that little hole there with something like this. Now this is a prototype part that we're working on, but the DNA air filter lid has a much larger opening, which just allows a uh, greater flow of air. And the R7 seem to respond to that. Our results show that just changing this, the lid out to the larger opening to get more air in, netted us the biggest uh, change. Now the overall power didn't really change. It was actually less at the peak, but as a road bike, it doesn't really matter because you are gaining that know four plus horsepower in the mid-range where you're going to be riding around all the time doing dank woolies and stuff the next question is why do people swear by removing the snorkel gains you bulk power when it comes to the r7 and the 2021 plus mto7s they have this snorkel with this lid they pretty much sit flush together with the mto7 of the past and their fz or fz07 the snorkel actually protruded down into the airbox, causing more restriction. With the R7 and the modern MT-07, the Yamaha's changed that, so you don't get as big a 
change, the result isn't quite as large compared to the earlier model bikes. So previously that was why everyone screamed about it. This day and age with the new bikes, it really doesn't change much at all. With the R7, removing the snorkel is not gonna net you extra power. It's actually gonna reduce your top end power. However, it's gonna move the power around in your rev range to give you more mid range power at that five and a half thousand RPM mark, which is where most riders are gonna ride the bike on the road. If you are going to race the R7, that is a different story. Ideally, you need to look at the rules at the championship that you're going to ride in. So initially, I'll start with the soon to be introduced Australian Superbike Championship. So for the Australian Superbike Championship, you're only allowed to remove the snorkel. You're not allowed to change the airbox lid. You're allowed to change the air filter. So that's what you'd have to be running with. In other championships, uh, the rules can be more open. So club racing here, you're allowed to pretty much do whatever you want. Much the same as Super Twin in the UK and Twins Cup in America, where you're allowed to completely remove the airbox, change uh, pretty much the entire way air gets into the motor. Things like that, you have the Horde power, which changes your intake runner length, moves from the standard main big airbox to having a big pod filter on the end of the runners. You also have the MWR style of filter. Uh, some people just run pod filters on the end of the modified intake runners and things like that. So the more air you can get into the motor, the better and that seems to have the best net result from everything that we've seen online. We will be testing that ourselves. We have some of those products to test. And once we do that, we will put the results up on the channel. If you like this video, or if you've found other results yourself, drop a comment below so that we can have a read of it. If you've got a link to some more information, also send that through. If there's anything that you want us to test, please drop a comment below as well. And again, if you're liking the content, hit the like button on that video, subscribe to the channel. That way we know we're doing the right thing. We're doing what you guys enjoy and uh, see you at the next one. Thank you. Out. I just hit the microphone.